guys, it is the Voodoo Doll from Noir Grimoire. Today I have a lesson for you about herbs used for cursing. I'm gonna give you a few dozen herbs that you can use to start out your apothecary for your baneful magic. Now we'll go over the process of extracting these oils and creating our own magic potions, and then we'll go over the actual herbs and a few gems that can be used for cursing. So of course, um, this is use, use at your own caution. I don't do car um, please don't email me asking me if anything's gonna come back to you I'll ignore you you should know that by now watching my channel um, my views on that so you have to come up with your own um, ideology on that so let's get into the process of creating our oils so there's a process called maceration is what you want to go through when you're creating your oils that you're going to use in your rituals so maceration basically is breaking down the herb you're going to make it dry first it has to be completely completely dry zero moisture in it because moisture makes the oil rancid so you want it completely dry so you're going to select your herbs um, any of the herbs that we're talking about today dry them out completely then you're going to crush them um, you can use a, a pestle mortar and pestle to go ahead and grind those up and then you will be putting them in a carrier oil a carrier oil could be uh, olive oil it could be sunflower seed oil whatever oil you want to use is your carrier oil you're gonna put those herbs inside of that oil, leave it in there for a week, shaking it daily, turning it daily, leaving it in a dark place. And then at the end of the week, um, you're going to go ahead and strain those out. I usually leave the bits of the herbs in the oil because it doesn't bother me. But if you want just a smooth, clean oil, you would take it and sift the oil from the herbs. You can use a little um, mesh um, cheesecloth or a strainer, and then you would keep the oil throw the herbs away but make sure to squeeze all the oil out of the herbs to make sure you get all of that uh, product and then bottle it and then go ahead and label it so whatever your intention is that you have put into that while you were making it you want to make sure that you put that on your bottle and keep it in a cool dry dark place and there you go you can make your own doom oil you can make your own love oil whatever type of oil and intention you want that's the process maceration and then uh, bottling so let's go into some herbs for cursing so i have a few dozen for you here i'm just going to read them off and the definition of them and i will tell you if something's toxic i have a lot of poisonous and toxic herbs that i have down here some flowers that are poisonous i'm using the um, intent, intent from that if you were to consume it so some of these are deadly like oleander if you were to consume that you would die so we're using the potential harm i guess as the intent for this, this herb if we're using it in a potion. So if we're trying to cause someone severe harm and we put oleander in that spell or in that oil, that's the intent is trying to cause that person bodily harm. Some of these things need to be handled with gloves if you're going to be squishing them up. Some of them cannot be heated. So please do not try to put the oil and the herbs on a stove and try to heat it up to um, uh, make the process more expedient because some of them will release poisonous gas. So this has to be a cold press, a cold process, no heat and um, not handling our poisonous things with our hands if we are crushing them because the oil itself can cause a reaction, especially if you're working with something like poison ivies or anything like that. So let's begin. So the first herb I have for you here is going to be a goo weed. So a goo weed is used for uh, making your enemies confused. Now a lot of these you can find at your local apothecary and some of them you have to order. So just price check online. Etsy has some. There's tons of apothecaries online if you live in a small community that doesn't actually have a store. So just find these things online. Um, I'm not going to spell all of them out. I will write some of the harder ones below because I know some of them are really hard to um, even begin to spell from the pronunciation. So the first one was a goo, and that is for making your enemies confused. The next one is asafoetida. So asafoetida is the funkiest smell you will ever smell. If you keep this in a bag, it will permeate through the bag and make your whole entire place stink. It smells like uh, garlic and 
gym socks and feet. It's it's the worst smell. You have to keep this one in glass. So this one is uh, sometimes referred to as the devil's incense and it is used to force someone to leave you alone. And this is also used in necromancy to control the dead. If you're doing necromantic work, then you would have asafoetida in your apothecary. But this one is a good one if you're doing a hot foot powder or trying to get someone to leave you alone. Asafoetida will make them flee. Next one is balmony. So balmony is used in causing general sickness. So if you're using some of those poisonous herbs and you're wanting to amplify the power of those poisonous herbs, then you can use balmony in your uh, mixture as well to just give it more of. We have bindweed. The name is a dead signifier for what it's used. It's used for binding, binding works. Bird's eye chilies. Any chili will work in Baneful Magic, but this one is exceptionally hot. Um, this is used for heating up spells. You can use it in hot foot powder or goofer dust, and I believe this one comes from out of the United States. It's not something that's normally found here. It might be South American. Um, don't quote me on that, but I don't think it's easily found here. So that one you'll probably have to order. Uh, black thorn. So any sort of thorn can be used for baneful magic. If you have a rose bush in your garden or um, I'm trying to think of something else that's really, really thorny, you can take the stem and just keep the thorns on the stem if they're short or if they're long, you can actually take them and pop them off and use them to poke poppets, put them inside of poppets, use them to inscribe candles, names in candles, um, even dipping them in ink and writing on paper so you can use any sort of thorn for baneful magic but blackthorn is one of the ones that I have written down bladder whack so bladder whack is another one if you're doing sympathetic magic and you're trying to target someone their health bladder whack targets the bladder so that can be used to uh, make someone lose their control over their their bladder incontinence it can cause um, hemlock Hemlock can be used to cause discord, a sadness. It can be used to paralyze the situation. This one is highly poisonous. So this is one of the ones that if you are crushing this one, you just want to make sure that you have gloves on and you're not handling it with your bare hands because hemlock is poisonous. So we have a henbane. Henbane um, causes illness, discord, and melancholy when used against a target. Jezebel root. Jezebel root is really, really thick, and this is what we use when we are trying to dominate a male using our feminine power. So this is for female domination over male. So this is what you would be using um, if you are a female trying to do a love spell or trying to dominate a, uh, a target, that's what you use. If you were a male, you would be using mandrake to dominate the female, but this is female to male domination is Jezebel root. So we have knotweed. Knotweed is used in binding spells to restrict someone and control their movements. So that's what that one is for. Um, lime or lemon, souring, we know that we use that in our sour jars. Um, it's probably one of the first things that we learn. Lemon juice and lime juice, just anything sour can be used to sour a situation. Uh, Lobelia. So this brings discord and symbolizes hatred. This one is hard to find. It's probably something that you're going to have to order online. Mullen. Mullen is used to command uh, dark magic or it's used as a binder. So mullen could be used as an amplifier. If you are doing your dark magic, you can add mullen to it. Um, for dark magic, it's just an amplifier. Mustard seeds can be used to cause discord and strife. So can poppy seeds can be used to cause uh, arguing, discord, and strife amongst people. Nightshade and belladonna. Nightshade is used to cause discord and illness. It is poisonous. Then we have poke root. So poke root can be used to control a situation. You can use uh, poke root and you can also use uh, calamus and you can use valerian and snake root mixed together to use uh, as a kind of a get the hell out of my life, vanishing ritual spell or whatever you wanna call it. Those roots mixed together are very, very good for banishing. Uh, Spanish moss is used to give bad luck to the person 
that you use it against. So if you were creating a poppet and you were trying to curse someone, you could stuff the poppet with Spanish moss. We have a slippery elm is used to stop gossip. So that one's a really good one. Um, it separates married couples as well. So does lemon verbena separates uh, married couples as well. But um, this one, slippery elm, it is used to stop gossip. If you were doing a cow tongue spell, you could use the slippery elm uh, in slitting the cow tongue and shoving it full of slippery elm if that was your intent to stop gossip. Wormwood. Wormwood can be sprinkled on the path of your enemy to cause strife and misfortune, or it can just be put into the ritual that you're doing or the, the poppet. But if you were trying to, you know, curse a neighbor or something and you sprinkled it on the sidewalk, that's kind of what that is. You, you is a plant. It looks like little uh, fern needles or pine needles. It is a plant that causes sickness if ingested. So this is our sympathetic magic. Um, if we are envisioning causing sickness to someone using you, those uh, symptoms would be convulsions, paralysis, and heart failure are what you cause if it is ingested. Next we have a nightshade. So that's a paralyzer. It causes uh, attacks of the nervous system. So if I'm trying to curse someone and I want to attack their nervous system, and I'm trying to do this in the ether, then physically I'm going to go ahead and use nightshade in my ritual and envision it paralyzing that person's nervous system. Lily of the valley, if ingested, would cause dizziness, vomiting, rashes, and diarrhea. So those are the things that you're trying to infuse upon your target if you are using lily of the valley. Castor oil seeds um, causes vomiting and diarrhea. So those are the symptoms for that. Rhubarb leaves, not the stalk, the leaves, cause kidney failure if ingested in copious amounts. We have uh, elephant ear, dumb cane, that it makes your airways swell shut and it can cause a rash. Hydrangea, cyanide, deadly. Oleander is fatal. Um, azalea can cause paralysis, a coma, or difficulty breathing if it was ingested. We have a philodendron, which is another plant. It causes throat swelling, breathing difficulties, upset stomach. Then we have mistletoe. Our beloved mistletoe for Christmas causes a slowed heartbeat and it is a hallucinogenic. So if we were doing that, that would be the intention for that. Um, we already went over snake and poke. It causes unwanted people to leave. So that is a pretty comprehensive list of things that you can have in your apothecary. I have all of these in my apothecary. You can mix them. So if you know what each thing is used for and you start memorizing the, the purpose of the herbs and roots, you can start mixing. So you know, you know, I want to cause a little bit of sickness to this person. I'd like to attack their nervous system uh, and make it look like they have Parkinson's disease because they can't stop twitching that I know that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick up my nightshade and then I'm going to um, if I really want to cause some discord maybe I'll use some nightshade some or nightshade belladonna for sickness and then maybe some mullen and some other darker herbs and your deities whatever you're doing like these are things that you can add to um, heighten your power in your ritual so if you're using your herbs and your deities and you have 50 herbs that you can use in gems you can pretty much cater uh, a pretty nasty spell in your in your own home so a couple of gems or crystals that you can use are kunzite so kunzite is what makes people break apart like it makes it impossible for them to get their shit together so if you had uh, your candle and you were going to take kunzite and drop it in the candle or if you were going to tape it to the glass of the candle if you're using a taper glass or put it in front of the candle or the doll or whatever you're using that's how you use your gem so uh, the Kunzite is also referred to as the breaker of Babylon. So it can remind people of what's really important in their lives because it makes it so bad. It makes them focus on better days. Um, if it's charged to the maximum meeting with your intent, it can really make someone's life fall apart. Um, it can also make them vulnerable to relapse 
or if they are not an addict, it can make them vulnerable to um, addictions. So if you have someone that you're cursing and you know that they are an alcoholic or a drug addict and they're barely keeping it together, if you threw some kunzite into that ritual, it would really fuck their shit up because it would open them up to using uh, more and really, really cause destruction. So that is kunzite. The next one I have for you is kyanite. So kyanite is, um, it helps you get in someone's head. So it's infusing thoughts in someone's mind. So if I wanted to put a couple thoughts in someone's mind, good or bad, I can add kyanite. So you would basically you can tell the kyanite stone, this is what I'm trying to relate to this person and use the stone in your ritual via your candle or your poppet and infusing your intention of thought into that and transferring it to the individual. If you're doing that, you want to do it at night when the person is sleeping because we're more vulnerable to messages when we are asleep. It's easier for them to be implanted and, and curses, blessings, all that. It's easier to transfer to someone when they are sleeping. So we have uh, meteorites. So any sort of meteorite you can use, you can get these on Etsy as well. Uh, meteorites are magnetic and they're used to increase um, the speed and the intensity of the spell. So basically a magnet, think of it as a magnet. So uh, Moldavite is another one. So Moldavite combined with Alexandrite can make someone crazy or delusional. So if you were to take those two stones together and use those in your ritual, it can cause uh, the person to be delusional. So you have Horatium. Horatium is one of my favorites. It is from Africa. It's the excrement of a little tiny like rat, a little tiny rodent. And what they do is they go into these caves and they scoop up the clumps that the excrement makes with the dirt. And that is Horatium. It's a musk scented. So it's the urine and feces of this rat. It is used in almost every perfume. And it's crazy. When you open the bag, it actually smells really, really good and it's expensive as hell. Um, but it is the base for a lot of perfumes. It's musk, it's pure pheromones. So if you were to use Horatium on someone, it makes them uh, remain where they are. That makes them stuck. So if you were to use it in a love spell, it wouldn't be a good thing to use in a love spell because it makes the person completely stuck and that can make someone violent if they don't want to be with you and they want to leave you but they can't because energetically they are stuck because you use this heracium. So this isn't something that you want to use in a love spell at all. This is something you want to use when you want someone to get stuck in the situation that they are in. You scumbag, narcissist, just fucked you over again or whatever it is, you go ahead and slap some heracium on his ass and make him stuck wherever you want him to be. So whatever that scenario looks like for you, making them stuck if it's making them stuck with someone that you know is not good for them and is going to make their life hell then you can use Horatio to make them stuck with that person you can use it to make them get stuck in a job it makes them have um the inability to get the energy to leave the situation it just makes them drained and they feel stuck it is a, a very, very like dark feeling if you use Horatium in a spell. So this is not to be used in a love spell because if you do, you'll be sorry. Don't say I didn't warn you. Uh, onyx, black onyx. So onyx is used to cause nightmares, mental torment, and break up relationships. Um, if you're married or living with someone and you find this around your house, get rid of it and do a cleansing because that could be the root of your problems. If you are having some, possibly you were cursed. Um, you can also wear it to defend yourself from her Horatium is very funny. So Horatium can be muted out by black onyx. We have opal. Opal can be a container for all negative energy. If you wanted to hold opal in your hand and speak just hatred into it that you have for someone, it holds that energy. And then you can add that to a spell or you can even put that in a piece of jewelry and give it to that person. Now you've just cursed that person and given them a cursed amulet in the form of a pretty opal. And keep that in mind if someone ever gives you an opal, if you are not on good terms with that person or know them extremely well, do not accept it because opal can um, carry negative energy. It can carry uh, illnesses, curses, um, anything, hostility. So be careful with that. The last one I have for you is Sphene. Sphene can be used to cause negative obsessions and extreme depression. So if you were to couple uh, Sphene with uh, Kyanite, 
or I'm uh, sorry, Kanzai. So Kanzai and Sphin would be good for um, people that have addictions. So or causing an addiction, Kanzai and Sphin. And then you have the list of herbs that you can use to cater your own spell. I mean, you are the magician. Uh, you shouldn't be listening to someone telling you, no, you can't mix that and you can't mix that. They're speaking from their belief and their experience. Even me, if you say, oh, you know, would you mix this and this? So personally, I wouldn't because I don't believe it works. So it's not going to work for me. But if you believe it, then it will work for you because you believe it. It's all about belief. When we, you know, buy this shit, these herbs and these gems and stuff like that, it's just to trick our mind into getting into the frequency that we need for us to create and manifest our reality. We don't need that shit. We don't need any of it. If you could visually just think in your head, um, you know, the power of Kunzanite, if you didn't have any and try to infuse it into a ritual, it would work. You don't need any of this stuff. It is just a visual thing to create a non, um, a non tangible result, if that makes sense. So there you have at least 35 things that you can use for your baneful magic. You can find all that stuff on Etsy, on eBay. Unfortunately, I don't sell herbs and gems in my store at this time, but they are easy to acquire online. So that's it for today, and I will see you next week with something new and something dark <laughs> for your apothecary and for your magic. So have a great day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.